Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A man is stabbed while in the Brackenridge Park area overnight. What police know so far about the suspects? And as Ian gets stronger and heads towards the Carolina, some of Florida's biggest businesses are ready to set to reopen today. One day closer to the weekend. It is a Friday outside with live cam right now. So we take a look at some traffic and traffic troubles are going to lead our newscast this morning. Mike is standing by with your weekend forecast. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, September 30th. Happy to be here this Friday for Steph. But first, before we get started, we're going to check in with Stephen. Lots of happening on the roads already, Stephen. Yeah, uh, I've been talking to our friends at TransGuy this Friday morning, and it is not looking good in a lot of areas, but uh, particularly on the southeast side. These shots at TransGuy aren't showing a bad commute. We did have a few issues that popped up on the roadways. Those have already cleared out, but the big headline that's going to be there for a while is going to be right there along 37 northbound heading into 410. I, I need to get that marked there, uh, but we do have the highway closed if you're traveling in those northbound lanes from 37 uh, trying to get into the San Antonio area from Pleasanton due to a major crash. Now it's unclear how long it's going to be cleared uh, and part, pardon me closed off. But of course we have to watch this area closely throughout the morning 410 also going west trying to get on a 37 northbound. You're going to have some trouble there as well. We're going to have to look for some different routes for you throughout the morning. But keep in mind if you are traveling up from Pleasanton, this is going to be an issue for you. Let's give you a quick wide look at the map and thankfully there's no other problems to talk about here. Uh, but the big thing is going to be there along 37. We're going to watch that closely. Got to get our friends at TransGuide back on the phone to see if we can get a shot of the conditions out there. But right now, the travel times heading in from Pleasanton aren't too bad just yet. You can still get on a 410 28 if you're traveling on 37 northbound, but that's going to change because remember, it's closed off. So we want you to look for a different route so that way you don't find any delays as you head into the Alamo City. But everywhere else is looking fine. No concerns on Highway 90 or even 35 traveling in from Lytle. But we're going to keep our eyes back on 37 northbound heading in from Pleasanton. We'll see if we can get a shot of the conditions out there. We do also have a crew heading out to the scene. Guys. Stephen, thank you very much. Well, we've had a wonderful morning weather around here lately. Mike Osrage joined us now. Has any rain entered the long term forecast for us? No. Nothing. Wow. Yeah, not a drop. Uh, it just keeps getting drier and drier, which is becoming a problem. Now we do have some great weather. One thing, do you notice it's just a hint? More, more humid, humid. yeah, right. it's, not, it's not. Yeah, it's not like you're going to be sweating when you step outside or pushes back or anything like that. I mean, you just kind of smell a little extra humidity out there this morning. We do still have plenty of clear skies, 67 degrees. We will still it's still dry enough out there. We are going to be dropping down into the low 60s, obviously low 50s, mid to low 50s in parts of the hill country. 58 right now, Bulverde, and uh, these numbers are up again. Yesterday they had gone up slightly from the previous day. Now, instead of all mid 40s and even upper 30s, it's mid and upper 40s and some uh, low to close to mid 50s for these dew point temperatures to measure moisture in the atmosphere. That is going to be changing, though. More on that in a second. Mold and uh, ragweed are both moderate. A little bit of pigweed out there. Ozone action day today, just to kind of keep that in mind. We will be dropping down to 60 this morning, 61 to be exact, clear and uh, yes, cool, but that extra little hint of humidity, 90 once again later on this afternoon. Another fantastic day. I mean, kind of splitting hairs as far as the uh, extra humidity around here, but we do get another shot of drier air coming in here just in time for the weekend. And so the mornings tomorrow as well as Sunday can be fantastic, nice and uh, dare I say crisp. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Mike, see you in a while. Thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for the suspects who stabbed the man in the leg overnight. Happened around 930 last night in the 900 block of East Mulberry near Red Oak in Brackenridge Park. SAPD says the victim is a 55 year old homeless man. Police say he came out of a wooded area after unknown suspects stabbed him in the thigh. He was taken to a hospital and is expected to be OK. Police searched the woods but were not able to find those who stabbed him. Happening today, a major road closure on Commerce Street. It will be fully closed between St. Mary's and Soledad Streets. This closure will last until Sunday, October 2nd. It's due to a crane being dismantled and removed from that area. This morning, Ian has regained hurricane strength as it powers across the Atlantic, moving towards the Carolinas. That is a Category 1 storm. The storm hit Florida's a monstrous Cat 4 hurricane. It flooded homes on both sides of the state's coast, cut off the only road access to a barrier island, knocked out electricity to more than 2 million homes and businesses. 
Florida's governor says officials are assessing the damage that will probably take years to rebuild. However, Disney says it already plans to start reopening its theme parks in a phased approach starting today. Well, a judge has ruled in former President Trump's favor in his challenge of the FBI search of his Florida home. U.S. District Judge Aileen Cannon scrapped several aspects of the plan that would have required Trump to make specific assertions in court. For example, he would have to say whether he actually believes the FBI planted evidence at Mar-a-Lago, as he publicly suggested. The special master, senior Judge Raymond Deary, had proposed requiring those assertions. In Austin, a man is facing charges for vandalizing the state capitol grounds. Workers were fixing the damage yesterday after police say Dries Bettingfield drove onto the ground the night before. He knocked down a fence and left tire tracks. Bettingfield was arrested and booked into the county jail. He's charged with criminal mischief and reckless driving. Police are still investigating. Well, this morning, Ukrainian officials say a Russian missile strike has killed at least 23 people and wounded 28 in the southeastern part of the country. And a stunning move by Russian President Vladimir Putin, who said he's expected to officially annex four occupied areas of Ukraine during a speech in the Kremlin. ABC's Ika Jokchi reports. This morning, government officials say Russian President Vladimir Putin will officially annex four occupied regions of Ukraine, totaling 15% of Ukraine's territory, at a formal signing ceremony behind the walls of the Kremlin. Russia stoking fears of even more escalation, warning an attack on the occupied areas will be an attack on Russia. The international community outraged. President Biden calling the Russian referendum a sham, claiming the results were manufactured in Moscow. And and that the true will of the Ukrainian people is evident on the battlefield. The United States will never, never, never recognize Russia's claims on Ukraine's sovereign territory. United Nations Secretary General condemning Russia's actions, saying it has no legal value and must not be accepted. It stands against everything the international community is meant to stand for. It is a dangerous escalation. It has no place in the modern world. It must not be accepted. Overnight during his nightly address, Ukrainian President Zelensky calling on Russian citizens living in Russia to stop their president. And as the exodus of Russian men trying to leave the country intensifies, Finland announcing it will significantly limit passenger traffic on its border starting today, banning Russian citizens traveling with tourist visas from entering. Meanwhile in Ukraine, the war continues. Ukrainian authorities say four rockets hit this eastern Ukrainian city located in the occupied Donetsk region, injuring at least 11 people. The U.S. and its allies have promised to adopt even more sanctions than they've already levied against Russia, including even more support for Ukraine. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. We are just getting started, 438, 66 degrees. Another injury already for the San Antonio Spurs, and the season hasn't even started yet. Well, what does this mean for the game this weekend in Houston? Outside with live cam, planning on taking your dog for a walk today. Mike has Fido's forecast coming up. In morning sports, we have our second injury for the Spurs before the preseason even tips off. Joining Kelton Johnson in his recovery from a dislocated right shoulder is now Josh Primo. He's down to suffering a medial collateral ligament sprain in his left knee. That means he'll miss the start of the preseason. But for Zach Collins, who only played in 28 games last year after recovering from an ankle injury that forced him out all of the previous season, he's just happy to be healthy. Not being able to like focus on the skills of the game and the thinking of the game and my body and other ways and just rehabbing an ankle, it's been unbelievable. It's been, uh, you know, I wish I could get those summers back, but I can't. So I tried to make it up this summer and it was, it was a lot of fun. The first preseason game for the San Antonio Spurs Sunday night in Houston. The UTSA Roadrunners are in Tennessee getting ready to face the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee tonight. The Roadrunners coming off their dominating win over Texas Southern in the Dome while the Blue Raiders are basking in the glory of their stunning upset of Miami. This game will kick off play in Conference USA where the Roadrunners have won their last three straight meetings. UTSA is still dealing with a lot of injuries that made up for the short week by practicing Sunday to get ready for tonight's game. 
Obviously, we want some guys back, um, but we're comfortable with who we have, um, and we're going to go out there and play football. Everybody was cr recruited the same way. Everybody's got opportunities and practice the same way. So, you know, the guys that we got, we're going to roll with and, uh, you know, play with them. Kickoff between the Roadrunners and Blue Raiders is set for 6.30 p.m. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Well, now here's a good sign. Look who made it back to practice for the first time since fracturing his thumb in the season opener against Tampa Bay. Dak Prescott on the field yesterday, gripping and throwing the ball after getting his stitches out last week. Now it's about how strong his grip will be as he rehabs that thumb before putting it at risk again. Really no reason to rush him back with the success of Cooper Rush that he's enjoyed. Back-to-back -back wins in Dak's play. Still, it was a good sight for Prescott's teammates. Yeah, we're definitely ready to have four back, but, you know, we got to do what we, we got to do while, while he's not here. And, uh, you know, had his team and the record uh, as in shape as we can uh, until he gets back. We don't want to speed up the recovery, I mean, the process just because, like, we want him for the longevity of the season. Uh, but obviously, as he as he knows now, um, while he's out, Coop got us. And then, um, you know, we got we got full faith, full faith in 10, and uh, we're going to ride this wave until four get back. Tight end Dalton Schultz returned to practice as well for the Cowboys following an injury. Joining him at practice, safety Jaron Curse, who is also recovering from a knee injury. Kickoff against the Washington Commanders is uh, Sunday, high noon, and KSAT 12 Sports will be there. It's 443 and 66 degrees. Exposing the scammers targeting Zell users. Up next, what a victim wants you to know before your hard-earned money gets taken. A man who says his bank account was drained after he got a text message is sharing his story on how he was scammed. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, exposing the scammers targeting Zell users. So that you don't end up giving all of the money in that account to someone impersonating your bank. And this morning, Marcus Miles from Ohio telling his story to GMA. The gentleman on the phone was really nice and um, just... Uh, Sounded like, you know, someone who would be from the bank. But he wasn't and drained Mr. Miles' account. His story, one of many from across the country. Demi Woods, speaking to our station WLS in Chicago, lost $3,500. Our San Francisco 7 on your side unit hearing from dozens of consumers. Lawmakers are now working to make these money transfers safer. The single most effective thing that can happen is for Congress to pass a law that says consumers are not going to be held responsible. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the expert tips to keep your money safe from scammers. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Time check, 447. Stephen Cavasso's busy morning for you so far. Yeah, it's gonna, gonna be a good morning uh, for drivers heading on 37 northbound. Uh, Mark, Sarah, let's get a look at Transguide. I just talked to them on the phone a little while ago. We were able to get a shot of the conditions out there, and unfortunately, it's not looking good. As you can see, we do have first responders out there. This is actually in a pretty busy spot, 37 North. We have a lot of folks coming in from Pleasanton, so we know that the drive is not going to be pleasant today. You can see that we right now, traffic where you see it off on the access road is being directed right there onto Loop 410 West. So again, first responders out there working to clear up the scene of a major crash. And unfortunately, we don't have a timestamp on when this is going to be cleared out. So just pack your patience this morning. I am looking for different routes, uh, but it is pretty busy. So take it easy on the roads this morning. That highway closed. I-37 North getting onto 30, uh, pardon me, uh, from coming in from 410. Uh, you will see some closures there as well as 410 Westbound getting onto 37 North and 410 East getting onto 37 North. You're going to have trouble in that spot. So keep in mind, we are looking for some solutions. Quick one, though. If you are already traveling on 410 West, exit South Cross Boulevard and you can get onto 437 that way. But uh, again, that's just one of the solutions we'll be coming through throughout the morning. It's just not looking good out there. Giving you a wide look of now at the map. Nothing else to talk about. Thankfully, it's going to be a pretty quiet morning so far on the roadways, but the big issue is going to be right there at 37 at 410. Uh, wish we had better news to report this early in the morning for Friday, guys. We know you'll keep us updated. Thank you very much, Stephen. You know, I, I would say that bow ties look good on some better than others. Mm -hmm. and, and the case in point. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this guy looks very, very dapper. dapper. Festive. And I think, it, you know, how you, you feel, how you dress. He's got that very, you know. 
He's got a lot of confidence, a lot of swag. Dapper yes. and debonair. Yes. Yeah. If you have a dapper and debonair, just scan that QR code and send in uh, some KSAC Connect pictures. Clear skies this morning. Uh, one difference when you step outside, I mean, temperatures are close to where they have been the past few days. We're in the mid 60s here in town. We'll continue to drop down a few more degrees, but there is a hint more humidity. These numbers do points. Uh, you like to see them below 60, so everybody is still below 60, but you can just sort of, I mean, there's just a little bit more. It's just not quite as as crisp out there, if you will. And these numbers have gone up about two, three, four degrees just in the past 24 hours since yesterday. And then also yesterday they had gone up from the previous day's reading and we'll still have some. I mean, it's still dry. It's kind of split in hairs. And so we will still have dry enough air and clear, clear skies, light wind to drop down to 60 later on this morning. And then again, we warm up and get up into the mid 70s by mid morning, 84 degrees at noon. And we will top off once again at 90. So cool side starting off warm side of things ending up the day. Now as far as the uh, Hurricane Ian and yes it is Hurricane Ian once again it moved out into the open water a little bit warmer out here. Gulf Stream's a little further to the east but this was a uh, warm enough to obviously strengthen that and gaining more energy. So it's back up to a category one storm and it is going to be making landfall. Looks like right around noon today there in Charleston, South Carolina. One of the biggest problems that they've been talking about is that's high tide there as well. So it's sort of a one two punch as this thing comes on shore and then it is going to be a big rain producer into the uh, mountains of western uh, North Carolina there and continuing to move on up. We've got a lot of dry air upstairs in the atmosphere and that's why we've had these beautiful blue skies the past couple of days. However, we're looking off to the west and there is disturbance out there and some of this high cloudiness is going to continue to get thrown in our direction. And so as time rolls on, we'll have a few more clouds hanging around here tomorrow, a few more Sunday, and then especially Monday and Tuesday. There's actually a tropical system kind of working its way up the west coast. Some of those clouds are going to get thrown on in here. Rain? No, but we will have a lot of high clouds, especially going into the first part of next week. 84 degrees at noon, sunny skies. High temperature today is going to make it up to 90 and good looking day. Weekend looks fantastic as well. We will be cooler, especially Sunday morning. That uh, little extra dose of drier air is going to be moving on in here. A couple of extra clouds in the afternoon and then more high clouds starting off next week. And actually those numbers next week are closer to normal readings, especially on the low end of things, but a little more humidity next week. It was nice. I saw one of our photographers wearing a like light jacket this morning. I was like, oh, is it happening? Is it <laughs> yeah. starting to happen? Falls being somebody? It's it's in especially in the hill country. Jackets Ooh. have been pretty much the call all week long. Which photographer? It was Asian. Asian. Yeah. So we have the groundhog we track, you know, early in the year <laughs> yeah. and then we watch Asian very closely and what he was Disney Plus. What the actors are saying about this reboot that's been years in the making. The Witches of Hocus Pocus are back for a new film and Rings of Power is still falling short of being Amazon's biggest title. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I banish thee from Salem <laughs> forever. There's a new generation of wannabe witches in Hocus Pocus 2. Whitney Peake, Melissa Escobedo, and Lily of Buckingham join Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy and Jimmy in this scary sequel. And Buckingham and Escobedo say the 90s original was a seasonal staple for them. It was one of the things that made me love Halloween in the first place, and it's my favorite holiday now. Uh, every Halloween we watched it. One of my mom's like all-time favorite Halloween movies. So I have just a lot of random memories of like sitting around a bunch of Halloween candy and pizza and watching the Sanderson sisters. Whitney Peak though, had never seen it before her audition. Hocus Pocus 2 is out today on Disney+. Plus. Disney is the parent company of ABC News. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Now I have to go to a Pride party and you're both too old to be in the pool. At the box office this weekend, one film to make you laugh, another to make you scream. Bros is a comedy from Billy Eichner, billed as the first rom-com about a gay couple from a major studio to open in theaters across the country. The worst smile I've ever seen. <laughs> And Smile is a supernatural thriller meant to leave you in tears, and it's expected to top the new releases with about 15 to 20 million dollars, which is about what it costs to make. You have fought long enough, Galadriel. Put up your sword. There's still some power in those rings. Prime Video's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power series was the most streamed series the week it launched, according to Nielsen's streaming video chart. And while it had a big opening, it wasn't Amazon's biggest. 
That title still belongs to Reacher. And happy birthday to Succession star Kieran Culkin. He's 40 today. While Oscar-winning actress Marion Cotillard is 47. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. It's 457 and 67 degrees. Ian has its eye fixed on the Carolinas this morning. Ahead, President Biden gives his assessment of the storm's effect on Florida. It's a big day for Texas politics. Governor Greg Abbott and Beth O'Rourke in a debate tonight. What voters say they want to hear from the candidates when it comes to the issue of abortion. And checking the roads with Transcatter, big issue is coming into town on I-37 on the southeast side. That's an incident that Stephen's already been tracking. We'll get a live update coming up next. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Abortion will be a big topic at tonight's political showdown between Governor Greg Abbott and Beto O'Rourke. We'll hear from two Texas providers who are still affected by the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Across Southwest Florida, search and rescue operations and recovery now underway as the nation braces for what President Biden calls a substantial loss of life. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in St. Petersburg following the latest. 67 degrees at 501 this morning. One of our photographers actually wearing a light jacket this morning. Will that trend continue as fall decided to finally officially stick around? Michael, let us know in his forecast. And a good morning to you. It's the last Friday of the month of September. It is the 30th. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my gosh, October already. Oh, wow. This is the part of the year where we fast forward. I mean, from here on right. out. Yeah. It's just like buckle up. Yeah. And speaking of buckling up, Stephen, I know the roads this morning are a mess, right? It, yeah, it's a mess out there, guys, and not a great way to start a weekend as we get a look at 37 at 410. If you're just tuning in with us, this is going to be the problem of the morning. I can guarantee that because 37 North there at 410, we have a major crash and you can see it right crash. That is, you can see it right behind me. Uh, those first responders have been out there working to clear this up. And in fact, I'll step out so you can get a good look and take that in because uh, you're not going anywhere if you're traveling to travel up travel up 37 northbound uh, get on to 410. That area is actually shut down. Now, where you see traffic moving, that's actually first responders directing traffic onto Loop 410 West. But here's the thing. If you are traveling on 410 East, trying to get into uh, I-37 North, you're going to have some trouble there because the highway is closed off right there at Loop 410 going west and east. So if you're trying to get on a 37 <laughs> northbound, look for some different routes. You see a portion of our map has actually disappeared there. That's the roadway to indicate that that closure is in place. But if you are already planning on traveling on 410 West. Uh, here's a quick solution. If you're trying to get back onto 37, just exit South Cross Boulevard. It's going to be a simple and quick, easy solution for you this morning, but uh, it's unclear how long we're going to see this closure take place. Things could change, obviously, but in a minute by minute, but we're going to have to watch it closely and have those updates throughout the morning. While we're at it, we'll get a quick look at the map and you can see, thankfully, nothing else to talk about. Uh, typically, road closures would be something we'd mention, but because of how bad it is here on 37, we want to keep our focus here and let you know what you can expect throughout the morning. Guys. Thank you very much, Stephen. All right, this morning we are starting off. It is uh, cool again. You definitely need a jacket, a light sweatshirt, especially in portions of the Hill Country. We're at 67 right now here in town. Clear skies. That bottom number, which is still below 60, that's always that, that threshold you like to be below with dew point temperatures, but that has gone up. So you kind of step outside and it's like, yeah, just a, a hint more humidity out there. It's going to be another hot one today. We will be two, three, four degrees above normal, depending uh, where you are going to be up to 90 here in town. The aquifer yesterday and, you know, of course, it's been taking some fairly decent hits the past couple of days. Not a huge hit, but still went down two tenths of a foot and the allergens, mold, ragweed are both on the moderate side. Pigweed is low. Also, we don't have much of a breeze today and with all that sunshine out there, it is an ozone action day. So I want to keep that in mind. That's the metropolitan area going all the way up in toward uh, Austin. Clear, cool this morning. That just little hint of humidity and sort of not really feel it, but sort of smell it a little bit. I guess is the best way to put it. Sunny, fantastic again today. Just beautiful. Weekend is going to be great. Now we are going to get another sort of reinforcing shot of drier air coming in here. So this little bit of humidity this morning is going to be going away. Even cooler low temperatures over the weekend. It's going to be nice to be outside when you wake up in the morning. And then some, some more clouds. We'll have a couple of them this weekend, but a lot of high clouds. Still nice. Still no rain going in through next week. All the details for the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark.
Mike, thank you. New this morning, an old bar on San Antonio's southwest side burned up in a fire overnight. It happened in the 1900 block of Frio City Road near Jupiter. Firefighters got to the abandoned building just after midnight to find it completely on fire. The building actually collapsed as crews were trying to put the fire out. So far, they're not sure what caused it. No one was hurt. Republican Governor Greg Abbott and Democratic gubernatorial candidate Beto O'Rourke are set to debate tonight in Edinburgh. Voters are hoping both gubernatorial candidates address the complexities of abortion to give voters a clear sense of where they stand. So we spoke with the organizing manager of Frontera Fund RGV, a group responsible for funding out of state abortion travel and the executive director of the San Antonio Coalition, Coalition for Life. So both group leaders say their organizations were impacted after Roe v. Wade was overturned. We are still on a pause in terms of funding abortions and travel. We did not receive the protections that we were hoping for. And both Roe v. Wade was over. Before Roe v. Raid was overturned, Frontera Fund RGV saw an average 30 to 40 women every month giving each $1,800 to pay for out-of-state abortions. But after the law was overturned, anti-abortion groups like the San Antonio Coalition for Life started to see an increase in women re requesting resources from pregnancy care centers. A reminder that during tonight's debate, Steve Spreester is one of our is one of the panelists. We're also holding a virtual watch party for our case at Insiders. Tim Gerber and Myra Arthur will be chatting with you online, giving you context about the topics that come up during the debate. The debate will be held at UTRGV. That's tonight at 7 p.m. Remember, Election Day is November 8th. Back here at home, a hidden camera inside a fake device at UTSA sparks a very real investigation. University police say someone put a camera in a fake smoke detector at University Oaks. The on-campus apartments are owned and operated by a private third-party company. The apartment staff will now be testing the smoke detectors to make sure they're actually real and working. If you live in these apartments and see anything suspicious, they want you to call UTSA police. This morning, search and rescue operations and recovery efforts resume in Florida following Hurricane Ian. ABC's Justin Finch is in St. Petersburg talking with first responders. Destruction as far as the eye can see. Southwest Florida in shambles after Hurricane Ian roared ashore, lashing the area with near Category 5 storm strength. You watch things starting to fly. Uh, Luna and I went off. Part of the roof went off. The rest of the roof went off, the walls caved in. The difficult search for survivors underway. And these are very challenging circumstances for our rescuers, very dangerous circumstances. They're dealing with high water, uh, you know, cities that don't look like cities anymore. ABC's Victor Okenda with the Cajun Navy, this mother and daughter rescued from the top of their car. Three hours watching the water rise. What was that like? Scared to death. Scared to death. I thought I was going to die right there. This could be the deadliest hurricane in Florida's history. President Biden warning the number of deaths from the storm is likely to rise significantly. The impacts of this storm are, are historic, and the damage that was done uh, has been historic. The Southwest Florida landscape transformed. The U.S. Coast Guard surveying the damage from above. Barreling east over central Florida, a week in Ian brought heavy rain plus storm surges. ABC's Trevor Alt on the impact. It led to significant flooding in places like St. Augustine. It led to water rescues in Daytona Beach. This morning, the eastern shores of Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas on high alert as Ian moves north on track for a second landfall as a Category 1 hurricane in South Carolina. Justin Finch, ABC News, St. Petersburg. 509, 67 degrees. Well, Twitter says it's switching to a new format for watching video clips. We'll show you how it works. And a fall from grace for a local grocery store after losing nearly 20 points in their health score. What they were ordered to stop doing immediately. 67 degrees at 509 this morning. The story this morning is traffic. We have road closures, northbound lanes of 37 and loop 410. Stephen has several other incidents he needs to tell you about. Full weather and traffic coming up.
Welcome back. 512, a local convenience store ordered to stop selling pickles and pizza, a tavern full of flies and serving tongs covered in mold. Tim Gerber has this week's Behind the Kitchen Door. First up on our tour of culinary miscues this week, Umark Grocery located in the 2100 block of Castroville Road. They got a 76 on their inspection last month, which was a big drop from their previous inspection in March of this year when they earned a 95. So what happened? Food in the fridge was too warm. There was no certified food manager on duty and the person serving pizzas didn't have a food handler permit. Ice bags weren't properly labeled and there was only one set of tongs for three containers of pickles when each one needs its own tongs. And the walk-in cooler was in need of a top to bottom cleaning. The business was ordered to immediately stop bagging ice, selling pickles and preparing pizzas until the violations were corrected following a reinspection. <laughs> Insects were a problem for Brickhouse Tavern and Tap Restaurant in the 1000 block of Loop 1604 on the north side. The inspector observed live flying insects on food contact surfaces and a significant flying insect presence throughout the business. The buggy problem tied to air curtains at the bar area windows. The inspector also noted mold found on produce in the cooler, ice scoops stored on a dirty surface and dust collecting around AC vents. He gave the business an 82 and ordered a reinspection. Walters Food Mart in the 2100 block of Burnett Street got an 83. They had violations for a deli cooler that was too warm and tongs next to a pickle jar were soiled with food and mold. The hand washing sink was serving as a personal storage area. It was full of plates, open drinks, glasses, deodorant and alcohol. But there were no paper towels. There were dead bugs and other debris found in the cold hold units for food and a drain in the deli cooler had a vast amount of mold and algae buildup. The owner told the inspector the kitchen is no longer in use. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Now 514, 67 degrees. Well, Google is giving up on gaming when it says it's shutting down its Stadia service. How new technologies from text descriptions coming up. I've been telling everyone the secret to great teeth is having healthy gums. Keep yours healthy with Crest Advanced Gum Restore. It's clinically proven to detoxify below the gum line. And it restores by helping heal gums in as little as seven days. Because you can't have a healthy smile without healthy gums. Advanced Gum Restore from Crest, the number one toothpaste brand in America. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This Always Ultra Thin is our best yet. It wicks gushes 90% faster and absorbs even more for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort. This is triple protection from always. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter is about to start looking a lot more like TikTok. It's switching to a full screen immersive video player for watching clips. Twitter is also going to use the swipe up gesture to let users endlessly scroll through videos on the platform. The new year will bring the end of Google's Stadia. The video game streaming service is being shut down in mid-January. The company saying in a blog post that the platform hasn't gained traction. Google is refunding all hardware games and add-on purchases. Meta has unveiled a new artificial intelligence system that creates videos by converting text prompts into moving images. It's simply named Make a Video. Meta says it lets you bring your imagination to life by generating one-of-a-kind movie clips with just a few words. I tried to make one about Liam Neeson, but it was taken out of context. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Did you like that one, Gabby? <laughs> one person's laughing. <laughs>
<laughs> the rest of us went, uh. uh yeah, yeah. Well, it's Friday. 519, on a serious note, uh, Stephen continues to track some big traffic troubles. Yeah, we unfortunately not smiling over here in the traffic lab. Uh, major issues, but before we get to that, we really want to get a look around town, let other drivers know what they can expect. And you can see there, 281 at the airport. We actually had a major crash there yesterday, but today, completely different story. Pretty quiet there in 90 West at Zazamora as well. 281 at San Pedro. Things aren't too bad around town, but as I mentioned, the big problem is going to be over on the southeast side as we take you right to our trans guide camera there at 37 at 410. The area still shut down, guys. We are watching this closely. A major crash was reported earlier in the morning, and of course, you are seeing those first responders out there. And where traffic is moving in the northbound lanes, that's actually being directed onto 410 uh, because right now, again, those lanes of traffic are closed off at this point. But let's get you to the map, show you what you can expect. Quiet roads here, of course, here in town, but we bring you into the southeast side where we have that major crash reported. Again, highway is closed at I-37 North at Loop 410. Keep in mind, uh, as you are on 410, you may see some problems there on 410 East trying to get onto 37. Those exits are also closed off as well. Uh, but of course, it's still very early on in the morning to where we're really not seeing a huge impact when it comes to delays. But it's going to change. Uh, we always know that's going to happen uh, as we take you back to Transguide. More people will get out on the roadways. And if the scene is still there, it will obviously cause big slowdowns. So expect uh, to plan your commute ahead of time. We'll be looking for those solutions throughout the morning, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Mike, you have some cuties behind you with their tongues out. <laughs> yeah, because they uh, just had a hard afternoon playing, and I like how they kind of have their own couch, basically, and or have taken over the couch. So <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if it's their couch, but it is now. It is. It's yeah. Twilight and, uh, and, and each has their own cushion, too. Twilight and Willow. Mm-hmm. Precious. Spoiled. Okay, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> scan that QR code, and it makes it a lot easier to send us in some KSAC Connect pictures. Beautiful start again this morning, and looks like we've got a uh, plane coming in here, landing down to the southeast. So we've got a little bit of a southeasterly wind out there. Uh, Clear skies. We are going to be drawing or dropping down. Pardon me throughout the rest of the morning down to the low 60s again and then warming up quickly. Now there is a hint more humidity out there this morning than we've had the past couple of days. It went up a few few notches yesterday and then once again this morning it's gone up compared to yesterday. It's not as though it's you walk outside and it feels humid, but you just kind of smell a little extra humidity out there and uh, 90 for a high temperature later on today again with plenty of sunshine. So as far as the uh, the dew point temperatures, these numbers were down in the 40s a couple of days ago, 40s and even 30s around the area. Now we're up into the 50s. They will drop down somewhat in the afternoon as is kind of the usual cycle. And then we get these southeasterly winds and notice how it's trying to pull in more of this, but we get a reinforcing shot of some drier air coming on in here and that's going to be throughout the day tomorrow in to Sunday. So especially Sunday is going to be a, a cooler morning. Tomorrow will be on the cool side as well, but the coolest will be on Sunday. And the uh, satellite picture, obviously nothing's going on there, but off to the east, there is once again Hurricane Ian. It obviously lost a lot of strength as it moved across the Florida Peninsula and was just a tropical storm. But then moving into the open waters, it's gained more strength there. And it is going to be making landfall right around Charleston later on this afternoon, early afternoon, about uh, one or, or excuse me, about noon or one o'clock in the afternoon right at high tide. So not a good situation as far as the South Carolina coast. And then you get this all this tropical moisture coming into the mountainous areas of northern uh, the Carolinas, northern South Carolina, western North Carolina, and then heading up in toward eastern uh, eastern Tennessee and uh, Virginia. Now, as far as we are concerned, a lot of sunshine. We've had these beautiful blue skies the past few days because of all this dry air, this darker shade of gray on the water vapor imagery. But we're going to start to see a lot more of this moisture. There's actually another tropical system down here. It's not going to have any real direct impact on us, but that's going to work its way up. And then a lot of the high moisture is going to be thrown off and thrown in our direction. So that's why we will have uh, some more high clouds few of them tomorrow, few more on Sunday, but then especially uh, first part of the week, we are going to have a lot of high clouds hanging around here. 84 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, high temperature today is going to make it up to 90. And once again, we'll be just a couple of degrees above normal. Tomorrow we start off 60 again, and then the cooler morning is going to be on Sunday, especially Monday will be cool. A couple more clouds here and there. Still a fantastic weekend. Great way to start off the uh, the month of October, and then we will have a lot of a lot of high cloudiness hanging on in here the first half of next week. Uh, temperatures lows. Once again, the humidity is going to come back. 
after this reinforcing shot of dry air late in the weekend, and that'll just hold things about where it should be this time of year, right around mid upper 80s and mid 60s. No rain. Nice to see some 50s on that map I in know. the mornings. It is. Yeah. It is so welcome. <laughs> Sunday morning, especially, is going to be cool, nice and drinking just, coffee on the porch Sunday morning. Yep. Mark it in your calendars. That's right. Yep. Jump right into October. 86 days till Christmas. 524, 67 degrees. Don't count. Yes. <laughs> All right. A cooking competition show with a twist and an indie action flick about Filipino spring rolls. We have some tasty entertainment news. That's next. Today's entertainment report is particularly appetizing. CNN's David Daniel sets the menu in the Hollywood Minute. Will you murder me if I move one of your plates? Nope. Okay. Mm -mm. It's your kitchen. I'm just living in it. <laughs> Chef Swap at the Beach is a cooking competition show with a slightly different recipe. Host Amanda Freitag has Myrtle Beach, South Carolina chefs trade kitchens, preparing the other chefs' signature cuisine with their staff. I love every part of this because what I do now in my career is I travel a lot and I am a guest in kitchens quite often and as an expert chef sometimes i don't even know where the spoons are chef swap at the beach premieres saturday on the cooking channel can you confirm that the restaurant incident is the work of the so-called taquito man what this is the taquito everyone is talking about it's not a taquito it's lumpia the filipino egg roll here's an action movie that'll make you hungry lumpia with a vengeance is a filipino-american indie comedy from patricio janelsa featuring a mostly filipino cast a wedding a crime syndicate and of course those delicious spring rolls of the title. Lumpia with a Vengeance premieres Friday in select markets and rolls out wider throughout October, which is Filipino American History Month. Getting mine to go in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Now I went Lumpia. All right, 529 and 67 degrees. Hey, uh, remember the Ice Bucket Challenge? We'll tell you how it's actually making a difference now for people living with ALS. And are you ready to try a butterboard? Oh no, why this unique culinary trend is becoming popular and why it's just grossing other people out. The wife of a Supreme Court justice meets with the committee investigating the Capitol riots. The committee has been very clear uh, that uh, we'd like to hear uh, from Jenny Thomas. Why the committee says she's key to important information about what happened that day. We have a low of 57 in our forecast this weekend. Is this a trend that will stick around? Mike will let us know in just a bit. Good morning. We've made it to Friday. It is September 30th. It's the last day of September. Can you believe that? I know. R jump right into October this weekend. Uh, I need to check. I know they do the Halloween countdown movies. Uh, on Freeform. Right. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm sure Stephen and Cavazos and I will talk about that in just a bit. But Mike, it's starting to feel like true fall weather. It has this week uh, once we had that front move through on Monday and really dried out the air and that's allowed temperatures to dip down uh, every morning this week has been well below normal. That's going to be the case again this morning. 67 as of right now, which is closer to what the actual normal temperature is. The average low dew points at 50 so we can still drop down. We've got clear skies, light wind and you can drop down in theory as far as that number. We're not going to be getting down that cool, but that's how how dry the air is light wind out there. Uh, we do have a hint more humidity than what we had yesterday and even the day before that. It's not as though you step outside and you feel it necessarily. You just kind of kind of smell a little extra humidity out there. Uh, 58 right now in Balverde, 55 Bernie stage. A Lotus at 68, 67, as I mentioned here at the airport. Mold, ragweed are both moderate. Pigweed is on the low side. 84 at noon, 90 high temperature. Plenty of sunshine around here. Tomorrow morning, still going to be a cool morning, both mornings this weekend. But like Sarah was alluding to, we get an extra little push of dry air coming in here. Humidity is trying to work its way back in. Get rid of that for especially Sunday morning. That's going to be the coolest in the forecast. And then humidity is going to start to creep back in here next week. 
What will that do to temperatures? We'll answer that question coming up in just a couple of moments. Traffic Authority, Stephen, big problems are still, right? Yes, that's right, Mike. Uh, let's get a look there. 37, this time at Salado Creek. Uh, called our friends at Transguide, and we were able to get a different shot showing the traffic that is heading north there on 37. And you can see it is a pretty big slowdown this early in the morning. We have a pretty serious crash that was reported just before for this morning. And right now, about an hour and a half later, we are all already seen the big impacts that it's causing when it comes to traffic. As always, we hope everyone's OK, but listen, this is not a good place to drive through at this point. In fact, if you are traveling 37, you're going to have some detours there to expect. So let's show you the wide look of the map. We'll start there. Things look fine right now, but as we bring you in, we talk about what we're seeing here on 37 right there at 410. That highway is actually closed. So if you were hoping to travel 37 northbound with a smooth commute, plan ahead because things are going to be a little bit different this morning. In fact, traffic right now is being diverted onto 410 West or pardon me East to get uh, into the Alamo City. So anyone coming in from Pleasanton is going to experience this problem. Also expect those West and Eastbound lanes from 410 to see some closures if they are trying to get onto the northbound lanes of 37. We're telling this uh, to you early in the morning, so hopefully you won't really find any delays uh, in terms of your travels to your destination, but it's going to be an issue for a known unknown amount of time. But right now, Let's look at other travel times and give you some relief there. If you are traveling in from Zagin, I would say it's still pretty green with 29 minutes at this point. A little more than half an hour on 87 northbound traveling up from Lavernia. And right now for our friends down in Floridasville, you can expect about a 29 minute drive time. So things don't look bad there, but can't say the same here. We changed the shot at 37 at 410. That is where traffic is being directed onto 410 coming in from 37. This is going to be the area we'll talk about throughout the morning and have those updates here on GMSA. Mark Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, things have gone deadly wrong for a man who San Antonio police say had robbery on his mind. They say a store clerk shot and killed him. Katrina Weber is live in the 9500 block of San Pedro near Isom. So Katrina, what is happening with the clerk now? Well, police spent some time questioning him late last night. Now, this does not seem like the type of case that would involve uh, any charges being filed against him, but police are still investigating and they will make that decision. That shooting happened at this Circle K store. And when we first got here this morning, there was still crime scene tape all around the edge of the parking lot. We watched another worker take that down, apparently getting ready for another day of business. The shooting happened after 9.30 last night. Police told us a man went into the store at first pretending to be a customer, but they say he pulled out a gun and pointed it at the clerk who was on duty. Police say that clerk also had a gun and fired it at the man hitting him. They say that suspect dropped his gun and as he reached for it on the ground, second time, Paramedics were called out here, but they were not able to save the life of that man, the suspect. At this point, we don't have any other information on him. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 537, the House Select Committee investigating the attack on the U.S. Capitol isn't done yet. Its chair says the panel will likely hold one final public hearing, but hasn't said when. In the meantime, as Amy Kiley reports, it interviewed a high-profile witness. To the extent we can reschedule it as soon as possible, we will. The House January 6th committee will still hold at least one more public hearing. That's after Hurricane Ian caused the postponement of Wednesday's scheduled session. In the meantime... The committee has been very clear uh, that uh, we'd like to hear uh, from Jenny Thomas. The wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas voluntarily met with the committee for more than four hours yesterday. She was here for a long time. She answered a lot of questions. The panel said it wanted to know about her discussions and uh, coordination uh, and text messages to Mark Meadows, as well as uh, specifically to John Eastman. Meadows was former President Donald Trump's chief of staff and Eastman was acting as Trump's election attorney. Both were instrumental in trying to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential race. Thomas texted Meadows that she was disgusted with then Vice President Mike Pence for certifying those results. Did you speak with your husband about your beliefs of the election being stolen? Thank you for your question. I look forward to answering the members.
Two sources say Thomas told the committee she keeps her politics separate from her husband's work. The committee chair says she also reiterated her belief the 2020 presidential race was stolen. Justice Thomas has participated in cases about that election. It cast doubt on the court itself, so there should be much stricter rules that he should have to recuse himself. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. This morning, fire crews working to gain control of a wildfire up in North Texas. According to the Texas A&M Forest Service, the so-called Lazy Fire has spread to an estimated 700 acres in Palo Pinto County, just west of Fort Worth. The flames are currently only 10% contained. Officials say the fire is burning in thick juniper, that which fuels the fires. No word yet on what sparked it, but Forest Service has reported very dry conditions in that region. They say with the dry weather and dry vegetation, conditions are ripe for more wildfires. A former National Security Agency employee is now under arrest on espionage-related charges. So according to the U.S. Justice Department, 30-year-old Jared Dahlke is accused of trying to sell U.S. secrets to an undercover FBI agent who he believed was a representative of a foreign government. So the Colorado man worked as an information system security designer for less than a month. He left in early July, citing a situation with his family and reportedly began corresponding with the undercover agent weeks later. Dalkey made his first appearance in court yesterday. If convicted, he could get up to life in prison or a potential death sentence. 540, 66 degrees. Taking a look outside with live cam, like I alluded to earlier, 57 degrees for a low on Sunday. Oh my gosh, it's coffee on the porch. But will this trend continue? Michael, let us know in just a bit. Market and Walmart are making major donations to Hurricane Ian and relief and recovery efforts. So Target says it plans to donate $5 million. The donation will be focused on the immediate needs of residents providing food, water and other essentials. Target said in its release, this is the largest disaster donation in company history. Walmart president and CEO John Ferner says his company will donate up to $6 million for recovery and relief efforts. That will include both cash grants and donations of essential supplies. Hey, remember that uh, bucket of ice water you poured on your head eight years ago to raise money for ALS research? It's now paying off. The FDA has just approved a new therapy for ALS. It's called Relivario, and it has been shown to slow the devastating paralysis caused by ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. A study showing the effectiveness of the medication was funded in part by money raised from the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge that swept social media back in 2014. The FDA approved it without a large-scale clinical trial because the drug has been shown to be safe. About 30,000 people in the U.S. are battling ALS. It's 544 and 66 degrees. Have you eaten off a butterboard yet? We'll take a look at this interesting food trend that's literally spreading. Welcome back. Just about 547. We're, we're very curious about this next story here. Have you heard of butterboarding? It sounds just like it is slathering a bunch of butter on a cutting board. I have very I have a lot of opinions about this. We'll talk about that in a bit, but then add some fancy toppings and take a big swipe of it with some bread. CNN's Janie Mose takes a look at this coronary concoction. <laughs> It's a dish for those who like to butter up their guests. Soften your butter. While riding the crest of a culinary trend. Have you heard of a butterboard? Have you heard of a butterboard? Literally boards slathered with butter and who knows what sprinkled in. Add tons of flaky salt, tons of lemon zest, a little bit of red pepper flakes, fresh baked strawberries, and add in some roasted garlic. I drizzle just a little bit of honey over that chili oil. Then everyone is supposed to dig in with their bread. The sharing part freaked out this skeptic. Looks like a board of germs and dust and a hair falling in it. But food influencer at Justine Snacks begs to differ. I love it. Her video whetted appetites, though she credits Joshua McFadden, who included the butter board in his 2017 book. Now it belongs to everybody. Y'all, this is to die for. Or die from. One critic called it a disgusting pile of coronary. When this TikToker didn't exactly devour it, someone asked, why are you chewing it like it's a piece of gum? 
Some are already moving on to the cream cheese board, topped with locks and capers, mopped up with a bagel. Already the butter board is starting to feel like an overloaded pizza with chunks of cured salami. Uh, apricot jam. I happen to have these dried edible flowers. Why just butter your bread when your bread can be butter boarded? You guys, this is perfect served with a warm crusty bed bread. A warm crusty bed is one garnish too many. Genimos, CNN, New York. I don't think that last lady lo loved it. Mm. She was kind of. Mm. Yeah, no, I don't love it either. I, that's gross. Sharing that. Yeah, I don't know. Like yes. maybe if I had my own, but. This has provoked some very strong reactions in the Case Hatch 12 studios this right. morning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Stephen, would you try it? Uh, you know what? I would try it. Sarah and I think we were talking about this. We probably just have our own butterboard. Oh, personal. Probably not share it. Yeah. Uh, personal but, butterboards. But cream cheese. Isn't that called a bread plate? A bread, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't Whoa. know. You know, and, and, and the thing is, this may have been around for a long time. We may not, you know, just now that it's on TikTok, it's just probably a catching thing. fire. I don't know. Uh, I eat peanut butter with a spoon, so I don't know if anyone knows that. But yes. Yeah, there it's you great. Go. Yeah, a all right. Full of peanut butter. We're starting the trends here. <laughs> but you know what else we're seeing? We're seeing a troubling trend, unfortunately, out on the roadways, guys. It's just not been a great morning. I 10 at Hildebrand. Uh, we do have a crash was reported. This is a shot from Trans Guide. You can see those flashing lights out there. Uh, not a clear shot, but we are seeing that traffic's getting moving this morning. Taking you right to the map. Uh, picked up right there at Fresno Street. Good news, 550. We're not seeing a lot of traffic out in that direction. This is going west on I-10. So going up, you're not going to have any trouble, but just watch out for those flashing lights. Let's take you down to the big problem of the morning, and it's over here on the southeast side where we still have that highway closed due to a major crash on I-37 northbound right there at 410. You can see the traffic's already been building, and as I step out of the way, you can get a clear shot of that. It's just not been good. Right now, we know 410 west and east. Uh, if you're you're trying to get on an I-37, you're going to have that trouble out there. So just keep that in mind. But also uh, right now, traffic that is heading in the northbound lanes of 37 is being directed to get off onto 410 East. So just watch that area closely. It's not a good spot to be in, but we give you a wide look at the map and you can see, thankfully, a lot of green on the screen. Nothing else to worry about there. But we take it back to the big issue of the morning there at 37 at 410. Just not good. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. What? I'm still thinking about. I mean, it's like it's I like any other. You're yeah. still thinking about it. It's like any other, you know, food that is served on a, a platter, yeah. something like that. Uh, but yeah, don't just like <laughs> unless it's your own, right? Yeah, and it's also like talk about the calories. Well, you a, don't yeah. a big a whole dip? stick of butter. Yeah, mm. you guys should try that on SA Live. <laughs> Butterboard, butterboard, yeah, yeah. butterboards. Let and us you know guys all is. come down and like take your butter, and we'll all. No, I'm, I'm not sharing communal, butter. So. <laughs> Uh, anyway, all right, beautiful moon. It is the uh, waxing crescent moon. It's going to be full uh, on the 9th, so it is moving that direction, obviously, and it's not going to be full, by the way, for Halloween. But uh, if you'd like to send us a couple of KSAC Connect pictures, just make sure you scan that QR code. Beautiful shot there, and it's going to be a beautiful sunrise. I know we're looking off in the other direction as of right now, but uh, yeah, we've got clear skies out there. We will continue to drop down with temperatures. We're in the uh, mid-60s right now. Now and then get up into the mid 70s by mid morning and really warm up quickly again up to 84 at noon top off at 90 sounds familiar. It's just about every single day this week has been pretty much the same temperature profile, give or take a degree or two. All right, Ian became a hurricane once again. It lost a lot of steam, obviously, moving across the Florida Peninsula, but moved back into the open waters of the Atlantic there. And so it's back up to a, a Category 1 storm. And the problem is, yes, it is going to be a huge rain producer, but also now it's not anywhere near the strength that it was when it made landfall, which was almost a Category 5 uh, right around Fort Myers. But high tide right there at Charleston. So not only is the, the tide going to be up, but then also that storm with the low pressure kind of lifts the water and forces it all inland. So uh, storm surge is going to definitely be an issue there around Charleston, and then it's going to be a huge rain producer as it continues to move inland. We've got a lot of dry air upstairs, that darker shade. That's why we've had such beautiful blue skies. We will get more of this moisture from the west moving on in here. High level moisture. And so that's going to give us more clouds. We'll have a couple of them maybe around tomorrow, perhaps Sunday, a few of them. And then all this moisture will continue to kind of come on in here. Doesn't mean we're going to be completely socked in, but just a lot of those high clouds are going to be hanging around here for pretty much the first half of next week at least. 84 degrees today at noon. 
sunny skies, high temperature up to 90 and then a high then over the next few days should say we are going to be uh, uh, right about the same temperature tomorrow morning 60. Then we get another little shot of some drier air coming in here. That's going to allow temperatures to dip down to 57 Sunday morning. Sunday's going to be the coolest morning and then humidity is going to start to creep back in here next week. And so low temperatures will be staying in the low to uh, mid 60s. Thank you, Mike. 553, 66 degrees. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, two, seven, fireball eight, daily four, three, five, five, one, fireball four. Cash five, four, seven, 22, 23, 35. Texas two step 11, 13, 31, 33, with a bonus ball of five. Coming up here on GMA, it is all about Ian, not just the aftermath that we will bring you the pictures, the rescues ongoing, all of the people that we met that survived this storm and the first responders doing that great work. But Ian's path, because it's a hurricane again. South Carolina should take the brunt of it, but North Carolina, parts of Georgia need to be on the lookout. I'm going to be tracking that. We'll bring you full team coverage right here on GMA. I'm coming up in the next hour, GMSA on your Friday. We're at the halfway point of the high school football season. Don't miss a preview tonight's gridiron action in just minutes. And up next, a look ahead at what issues voters will see and hear about during tonight's showdown between Governor Greg Abbott and challenger Beto O'Rourke. But the big news on the roads this morning is on inbound 37. That would be 37 north on the southeast side causing huge backups. You're looking live at 37 and Salado Creek. Stephen Cavazos is tracking all of these troubles for us right here on GMSA. A store clerk strikes back against a man who police say was trying to rob him. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why police say that clerk had to shoot a second time even after that suspect was down. Plus, an old bar on the southwest side burns up overnight. We'll tell you what happened when crews tried to put the fire out. Taking a live look at the roads of Trans Guide. Lots of traffic trouble today on I-37 and Military Drive. Stevens got the latest before you head out the door. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, September 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Happy to be in this Friday for staff. Let's go straight to traffic. You get an update on a situation. If you're just now joining us, I-37 is a big problem on the southeast side. Uh, unfortunately, I just saw the camera panning there, Mark, Sarah, and uh, right now friends at Transcout are still scoping through to see exactly what the conditions look like. And I'll tell you this, they aren't looking good. 37 there at 410. Right now, northbound lanes are pretty much shut down because of a major crash that was reported. Just look, check this out. We do have a whole stretch of traffic that is building almost like a river back there. But what we're seeing is that officers are also directing vehicles off of uh, 37 north onto 410 east uh, trying to get into San Antonio. So here's why it's a problem because 37 north, a lot of people are waking up probably having to head to San Antonio from Pleasanton. This is going to cause an issue for those commuters. And keep in mind, this crash was reported just before four this morning, and it's now 601 on the dot. And of course, this is going to cause a lot of issues for anyone that has to head out in this hour because a lot more people are expected to get out on the roadways. But we're first going to take you to a new crash that just popped up this time over off of I-10 westbound at Fresno Street. We mentioned this a little bit earlier. Uh, looks like that may have cleared out, but the new one uh, is not too far. I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, looks like it may not have popped it up in there, but the highway, as we were talking about it just earlier, is closed there at 37 North at 410. Keep in mind, those west and eastbound lanes are also going to see some impact if any drivers are trying to get onto I-37 northbound. Now, let's go to that new crash that popped up where it's also causing some issues, but this time in the northbound lanes of 1604, 1604 southbound at Old Pearsall Road. But you can see those southbound lanes aren't seeing any problems just yet. But just watch out for any of the first responders. They they have had their hands full this morning, but we give you a wide look at the map and thankfully just a lot more quiet green on the screen. That is probably going to give us some relief, but right now things just aren't looking any better here at 37 at 410 guys. Thanks, Stephen. Not good news at all. All right, we do have a lot of clear skies out there, and this is where the sun is going to be coming up. We should see the uh, glow of the sunrise in about the next uh, 
maybe half an hour, 35 minutes or so. It's going to be spectacular. 65 now here in town, so we've lost a couple of degrees in the past hour. 53 comfort, 56 in Bernie, and we'll continue to drop down a few more notches in the next uh, hour, hour and a half. Mold and ragweed are both on the moderate side. Pigweed is low. The updated count is going to be coming out in um, about an hour, hour and a half or so. 84 at noon, 90 high temperature today. So once again, we're going to be starting off slightly below normal for low temperatures, slightly above normal for high temperatures. Tomorrow morning, another cool one. Good looking day tomorrow. A couple of high clouds out there. Then we get another quick shot of some dry air coming on in here, and that's going to allow things to be even cooler by Sunday morning. Humidity will start to make a return. What will that do to temperatures? Details on those coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Mike, thank you. San Antonio police say a man who set out to rob a Northside convenience store was met with a deadly surprise. They say the store clerk had a gun and used it to shoot and kill him. Katrina Weber is live in the 9600 block of San Pedro near Isom. What's the mood at the store like now, Katrina? Well, the clerk who was on duty now got here about an hour ago. We saw her get right to business, trying to remove any sign of what happened here late last night. We watched as she took down the crime scene tape that was all around this parking lot and then started getting ready for a new day on the job. Now, there was a different clerk here late last night, about 10 o'clock or so, or before 10 o'clock, when police say a man walked in. At first, pretending to be a customer, police say at some point that man pulled out a gun and pointed it at the clerk, but they say the clerk also had a gun and shot the suspect. After being hit, police say the suspect dropped his gun. They say as he was attempting to pick it up again, the clerk shot him again. He died before paramedics could take him to a hospital. We don't have any information on him yet, including his name. Uh, police are still investigating this case. They did spend some time questioning the clerk, but they will decide what to do next, whether there's any need for any charges related to the shooting. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. San Antonio police looking for the suspects who stabbed a man in the leg overnight. It happened around 930 last night in the 900 block of East Mulberry near Red Oak and Breckenridge Park. SAPD says the victim is a 55 year old homeless man. Police believe he came out of a wooded area after unknown suspects stabbed him in the thigh. He was taken to a hospital and is expected to be OK. Please search the woods, but weren't able to find those who stabbed him. An old bar in San Antonio's southwest side burned down in an overnight fire. It happened in the 1900 block of Frio City Road near Jupiter Street. Firefighters got to the abandoned building just after midnight to find it completely on fire. The building actually collapsed as crews were trying to put the fire out. So far, they're not sure what caused it. No one was hurt. Looking ahead, the first and only debate between Republican Governor Greg Abbott and Democratic challenger Beto O'Rourke is set for tonight down in Edinburgh. So voters are hoping both gubernatorial candidates will address issues like abortion to give voters a clear sense of where they stand. So we spoke with the organizing manager of Frontera Fund, RGV. It's a group responsible for funding out of state abortion travel and the executive director of the San Antonio Coalition for Life. So both group leaders say their organizations were impacted after Roe v. Wade was overturned. A reminder that during tonight's debate, KSAT Steve Spreeser is one of the panelists. We're also holding a virtual watch party for our KSAT insiders, and we will be chatting with you online, giving you context about the topics that come up during the debate itself. The debate, by the way, being held at UT Rio Grande Valley in Edinburgh tonight at 7 o'clock. So join us for all our coverage. Election Day is coming up on November 8th. Right now, 606, 66 degrees. So we'll come in the next half hour. GMSA search and rescue missions are underway across Florida in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. And back here at home, are you ready for some Friday football? Our big game coverage of high school action gets rolling after the break. So we have a low temp of 57 this Sunday. You might actually get to bust out that sweater that's collecting dust at the corner of your closet. But will the sweater weather stick around for the rest of the week in these early mornings? Michael, let us know when we come back. Six ten on a Friday morning. Week six marks the midpoint of the high school football season. So many teams are enjoying their bye week, but Friday features some important district matchups like our game of the week, Brandeis versus Johnson. KSAT 12's Andrew Seeley previews the best games to stream on the BGC app tonight. 
Yeah, they're a good team. Um, they got a lot of good playmakers. It'll be a good look at what the playoffs will look like. They're, they're a good team, but we're going to show them what we got and show that we're one of the best teams in San Antonio. These two programs know each other very well. Brandeis and Johnson have met 14 times since 2011, and the Broncos own the edge in the regular season series 6-5. to five. But all of those meetings have been decided by an average of five points. The Jaguars won last year's meeting 28-22. This year, both teams are undefeated in district. Johnson is very well coached. Um, Coach Miller's done an outstanding job. And they play physical football. They're going to play hard, uh, offensively, defensively. Coach Bruce does a heck of a job over there. And um, we know that we're going to, we're in for a, a, all four quarters. Harris throwing for Manchester. Manchester makes the catch. Meanwhile, Friday night also features two huge District 29-6A showdowns. Harlan got their first win in district play last week, 59-52 in overtime over a previously undefeated Warren. This week, the Hawks go head-to-head -head with Stevens, who rolls into Ferris Stadium, boasting an undefeated 3-0 record in district play. And over at the gust, number 9 Warren looks to bounce back from that OT loss to Harlan with a game against Taft. The Raiders rebounded from their first loss of the season and took down O'Connor 24-6 to improve to 3-1 overall and 1-1 in district. The Raiders have won the last two meetings between these two programs by a combined 44 points. Can Warren snap that skid? We'll find out tonight at 7 p.m. right here at Gustafson Stadium. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Andrew Seeley. Thank you, Andrew. All right, Stephen, seeing a big backup on 37 near Salado. Yeah, that is due to that crash that we talked about a little bit earlier. That's been the topic of the morning. 37 northbound. You're going to have trouble out there. You can see right there from the shot at Trans Guide. It is pretty much a bumper to bumper traffic out there. Out in the distance, we actually have some flashing lights. Let's give you a different shot there from the Trans Guide rotation because the issue is there at 37 at 410 where we do have that major crash that was reported. We talked about it earlier this morning. It's going to be something that we're going to have to mention because this is an area that is heavily traveled for anyone that is traveling up from Pleasanton to the Alamo City. And you can see first responders there are directing those vehicles actually often to 410 uh, eastbound because that's where traffic is going to have to take a, a turn to get into the Alamo City. But let's get you to the map because where the highway is closed off again, 37 northbound there at 410 and have the closure marked out there for you. We see the buildup, but keep in mind those westbound and eastbound lanes trying to get on to Fort uh, I-37 northbound. You'll have some trouble as well because the area has been shut down. But uh, thankfully, we're not seeing any red on 410 yet. But we take you to a drive over here to 1604 southbound at Old Pearsall Road. Another crash all also reported this one hasn't really been causing a whole lot of issues, but uh, I just want you to take note of that if you have to travel in the area because it looks like a portion of 1604 is also shut down due to that major uh, crash out in the area. But now let's give you a quick wide look at the map at 613. You can see thankfully uh, everywhere else is pretty quiet, but these two issues could cause some bigger problems for drivers out on the roadway. Also keep in mind that drive time from Pleasanton is looking a little bit more than half an hour already in the yellow. We're not even really in morning rush yet, but this is uh, going to be a nightmare for anyone that has to try to commute through this. So I would just say it's best to avoid the area and look for different routes. Yeah, it's a tough start for quite a few drivers, but nonetheless, Mike's still going to roll his school bus this morning. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Although that that trans guy camera right behind Steven there, you know, over his left shoulder where the lights just all back up right there. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah, not a good sight. So, all right. Yeah, rolling the bus, uh, grab a jacket once again this morning. Won't need it by this afternoon and temperatures will continue to drop down. Bottom out at 61 degrees. Clear, cool. We've got some 50s already in parts of the hill country, of course. And then once again, you know, about the same temperature profile every day. Well, since Tuesday of this week, gaining 30 degrees from the low to the high. We start off with lows a little bit below respective normal and high temperatures a little bit above that. And take a look at this guy. Yeah, a very cute little little pup there. Just almost looks kind of innocent or like he did something and is pulling the innocent look, I think. But really enjoying his breakfast in the morning. Thank you for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Scan that QR code, and that makes it a lot easier to uh, send us in some of these uh, KSAC Connect pictures, be it beautiful weather or your pup or your kitty. All right, we've got mm, no glow of the uh, sunrise as of yet. That's just a little bit of uh, leftover ambient light right there. But, yeah, it's going to be spectacular. Again, grab your sunglasses along with your jacket this morning. You'll still need sunglasses all day, but like I said, not the jacket. 64 at 8 o'clock, so we'll warm up very quickly once that sun, of course, gets higher in the sky. 
Like I said, same temperature profile that we've had for uh, four days this week, 86 at one o'clock. Top off at 90 later on today. A little bit of a breeze out there out of the uh, southeast. Now, as far as humidity, it's still low, still low enough to allow temperatures to drop down with the clear skies and the light wind combined. But these numbers are up slightly. And these dew points measure moisture are compared to yesterday and compared to the day before. You can kind of smell it when you step outside. A little bit of extra humidity. And we're going to have a pleasant evening tonight. Great night for uh, for football tonight. And that humidity is going to try to come back in here. But then that's going to be the case tomorrow morning. But then by uh, throughout the day tomorrow and by Sunday morning, we get another reinforcing shot of some dry air coming on in here. So that's going to make uh, Sunday morning the coolest in the seven next seven days. All right, Hurricane Ian. Did gain hurricane strength again after being downgraded to a tropical storm after it moved across the Florida Peninsula. That will make landfall right around Charleston, South Carolina, just about uh, noon, early afternoon, right at high tide. So wrong time. But if you had to pick a, the worst time, that's it with high tide right there. And so that's going to be causing a lot of storm surge. And then it will obviously weaken over the land, but still be a big rain producer going into the Carolinas and the eastern Appalachians. As far as we are concerned, nothing as far as clouds today, nor really tomorrow, maybe a cloud or two uh, here or there tomorrow. A few more on Sunday, though. And then we get on into uh, the rest of the, uh, the week and we're going to start to see more clouds around here and also humidity after that little bit of a drop on Sunday, Monday is going to start to come back in as the, uh, the week rolls on. So it's not like it's going to be oppressively humid, but it's not going to be as cool in the mornings by the mid and latter part of next week. 84 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, good looking day and uh, 90 sunny later on today. Then the weekend, beautiful, nice, cool morning tomorrow. Even cooler Sunday morning with that reinforcing shot of some drier air coming on in here. And we'll have a couple of extra clouds around Sunday and then a lot of basically high clouds first part of next week. Temperatures fairly close to respected normals. Well, okay, Mike Ostrich, looking pretty good overall. Oh, yeah. I know so you want the rain, but. Yeah, we all need all. And we ton really need it. Of mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been, I mean, when was the last time we had rain? It seems like forever. Can't even remember last time we had it. We were down so much. So far, we are on track. Is the driest uh, on record here in San Antonio. Yeah, there was a stormy week or two there. A, a, a ways Early, back. like second week of August. And exactly. That was about so the it's, last it's been a stretch. 618, 65 degrees. Well, just ahead, Google says they're working to keep people's private information safe online. So how they're using a new feature to pull it off. Plus the sequel to a Halloween classic is here. We have the breakdown right now in your morning spotlight. I banish thee from Salem <laughs> forever. There's a new generation of wannabe witches in Hocus Pocus 2. Whitney Peak, Belisa Escobedo, and Lily of Buckingham join Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy and Jimmy in this scary sequel. And Buckingham and Escobedo say the 90s original was a seasonal staple for them. Evan, it was one of the things that made me love Halloween in the first place, and it's my favorite holiday now. Uh, every Halloween we watched it. One of my mom's like all-time favorite Halloween movies. So I have just a lot of random memories of like sitting around a bunch of Halloween candy and pizza and watching the Sanderson sisters. Whitney Peake though had never seen it before her audition. Hocus Pocus 2 is out today on Disney Plus. Disney is the parent company of ABC News. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Now I have to go to a Pride party and you're both too old to be in the pool. At the box office this weekend, one film to make you laugh, another to make you scream. Bros is a comedy from Billy Eichner, billed as the first rom-com about a gay couple from a major studio to open in theaters across the country. The worst smile I've ever seen. <laughs> and Smile is a supernatural thriller meant to leave you in tears, and it's expected to top the new releases with about 15 to 20 million dollars, which is about what it costs to make. You have fought long enough, Galadriel. Put up your sword. There's still some power in those rings. Prime Video's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power series was the most streamed series the week it launched, according to Nielsen's streaming video chart. And while it had a big opening, it wasn't Amazon's biggest. That title still belongs to Reacher. And happy birthday to Succession star Kieran Culkin. He's 40 today, while Oscar-winning actress Marion Cotillard is 47. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. This is how it feels to do more with less asthma, thanks to Dupixent. 
Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Imagine that. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about the newer worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. In this morning's GMA First Look, exposing the scammers targeting Zelle users. So that you don't end up giving all of the money in that account to someone impersonating your bank. And this morning, Marcus Miles from Ohio telling his story to GMA. The gentleman on the phone was really nice and um, just uh, sounded like, you know, someone who would be from the bank. But he wasn't and drained Mr. Miles' account. His story, one of many from across the country. Demi Woods, speaking to our station WLS in Chicago, lost $3,500. Our San Francisco 7 on your side unit hearing from dozens of consumers. Lawmakers are now working to make these money transfers safer. The single most effective thing that can happen is for Congress to pass a law that says consumers are not going to be held responsible. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the expert tips to keep your money safe from scammers. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. In consumer headlines, Twitter is about to start looking a lot more like TikTok. It's switching to a full screen immersive video player for watching clips. Twitter is also going to use the swipe up gesture to let users endlessly scroll through videos on the platform. The new year will bring the end of Google Stadia. That's the video game streaming service. It's being shut down in mid-January. The company saying in a blog post that the platform hasn't gained traction. Google is refunding all hardware, games, and add-on purchases. Google taking a new step toward keeping a person's private information safe. There's now an option that allows users to request and exclude, to exclude rather, personal information from online search results. This feature is called Results About You, and it focuses on keeping pages containing emails and home addresses from Google searches. It's 625 and 65 degrees. Still ahead of 630, Hurricane Ian destroyed large parts of Florida's west coast, but it's all not over yet. We'll tell you where the storm could go next as search and rescue teams continue this morning. Plus, have you seen the TikTok trend about switching from traditional grass lawns to clover lawns? But will it work for San Antonio Why a local ecologist is saying not so fast? Trans guide right now, I-37 northbound, still shut down on the southeast side. Stephen Cavazos will get you updated on how bad those backups are as you see traffic snaking off into the distance. Taking a live look at the roads with Transguide. Lots of traffic trouble today on I-37, Loop 410. Stevens got what you need to know for your drive to work. What a mess. Welcome mm. back. It is 630 on your Friday, September 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And Stephen, you've had your hands full, especially two issues on 37. Yeah, uh, that's actually that issue there. 37 to 410 has been a plague in drivers all morning long. Uh, you know, those first responders have been pretty busy as well. But let's get a wide look at Trans Guide. You can see 37 at 410 has not gotten any better. It's actually gotten worse when we see a look at the traffic that's been built. Building. Mike, uh, Mark described it perfectly where you can see it kind of just loop around in the back there. It's bumper to bumper. And right now uh, we are seeing those first responders that are working to clear up this scene. Uh, it came in a, just after four this morning or just before four this morning, I should say. And right now uh, it's just again, we're waiting to see if this gets cleared up before we really start to see the commute get going. But I would say right now it's just an area you want to avoid. Highway closed there at 37 northbound there at 410. Build up right there already taking place in the northbound lanes. Uh, but but keep in mind, 410 East and West trying to get onto 37 North. You're going to have trouble as well because right now the, the closure is impacting a lot of people. Traffic 37 Northbound is being directed onto 410 East to get into the Alamo City. As mentioned, it's a big problem for anyone that is having to drive into San Antonio from Pleasanton. Not a pleasant morning, unfortunately, but we take a drive over here where we also are observing another crash that popped up off 1604 Southbound. This has not been causing a lot of issues for drivers out there, thankfully, but uh, we're going to have to 
watch it closely. Unfortunately, no trans guide cameras are in the area, so we're not able to get a peek at the conditions out there, but it's another spot that we're going to have to keep a close eye on. Let's give you a wide look at the map. It's just been quiet elsewhere around town. These two issues have obviously been the headline on the roadways. Uh, right now, the drive time 37 from coming in from Pleasanton. It will take you at least 35 minutes, but I would expect you can add a few more to that because of the closure that we're seeing out there. Hoping for a better update before we wrap up this newscast, but Mike, please tell us some good news. Well, we've got beautiful weather out there. Grab a jacket before you head out the door. We're already starting to see maybe a bit of the uh, glow of the sunrise looking off there to the uh, east. Traffic on 410 there is moving along very well. Temperature out at the airport stands at 65 degrees. Still very dry air, even though that number has come up slightly from yesterday. And yesterday was slightly up from the previous day. Bit of a breeze, not much out there. Out of the north at just 5 miles per hour. So with the clear skies, light or no wind in some places and that dry air. We are going to be dropping down another couple of notches before it's all said and done. 55 right now, Bernie stage 53 in comfort and 64 in New Braunfels, 61 already out there at Randolph. Mold moderate, same thing with ragweed. Pigweed is on the low side. The updated pollen count is going to come out in about uh, an hour or so. Clear, cool. Now there is just a hint of extra humidity when you step outside. Not bad at all, but you can just kind of, it feels and smells a little different than it has the past few mornings. Sunny, fantastic today. Weekend, one or two extra clouds. Just a few high clouds out there, especially on Sunday. And it's going to be a wonderful weekend. As a matter of fact, we'll get another reinforcing shot of drier air, really allowing things to cool off by Sunday morning. Then we'll have a lot more in the way of some high clouds coming in here next week. Still very nice. We will start to see slightly more humidity, but unfortunately still not a drop of rain in the forecast. How cool will it get Sunday morning? Details in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Mike, thank you. An attempted robbery at a convenience store here in San Antonio has gone wrong for the robbery suspect. Police say the clerk shot and killed him. Katrina Weber is live in the 9600 block of San Pedro near Isom Road. Katrina, good morning. You mentioned earlier the suspect also had a gun. How did the tables turn? Well, good morning. Yeah, this is probably something the suspect did not expect. Now, police say while he was inside this store pointing the, the gun at the clerk, the clerk was able to pull out his own gun and fire. The paramedics who arrived here shortly after 930 last night were not able to save that man, that suspect. He died from his wounds. Police say he had walked into the Circle K store pretending to be a customer, but then he pulled out a gun in an attempted robbery. Officers told us that the clerk fired at the suspect, hitting him and causing him to drop his weapon. They say when the suspect went to pick up his gun again, the store clerk shot him a second time, and he did die from his wounds. The police have not released the name of the suspect. They are still investigating this case and will decide what to do next. And when we got here, there was still crime scene tape all around the edge of this parking lot. We watched uh, the worker who came in this morning take that crime scene tape down and again uh, pre uh, prepare for another day of business. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Happening today, deliberations are expected to begin in a trial we've been following closely. So 20-year-old Jaron Garcia is accused of shooting and killing his stepfather last year. So two key witnesses took to the stand yesterday, his brother and his mother. They both gave conflicting testimonies. His brother told the jury he initially lied to detectives about key details on the case. If found guilty, Jaron faces up to life in prison. This morning, southwest Florida is in shambles after Hurricane Ian roared ashore, lashing the area with high winds and severe flooding. So right now, search and rescue operations are underway, along with recovery efforts of people killed in the storm. President Biden says the number of deaths from the storm is likely to rise significantly as emergency crews make their way through flooded neighborhoods. At the moment, the eastern shores of Florida, Georgia and the Carolinas are on alert as Ian moves north. The storm is on track for a second landfall in South Carolina as a Category 1 hurricane. And looking ahead, we will be hosting another phone bank coming up Monday in partnership, partnership rather with the Red Cross to raise money for hurricane relief efforts for Florida. So phone, phone lines will be open from noon to 7 p.m. on Monday and we'll release the phone number to call 
on that day. We held a phone bank this past Monday for the people of Puerto Rico after Hurricane Fiona ripped through the island. And the final total from that event was just over $14,000. So thank you to everyone who donated then. And we hope to have the same or better response for our phone bank coming up on Monday for the victims of Ian. We want to remind you that KSAT is hosting a community town hall Thursday, October 6th at 2 p.m. for domestic violence. The month of October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we'll be discussing the connection between domestic violence and mass shootings. A topic expert, a topic expert is currently exploring those topics. The town hall will be moderated by KSAT anchor and reporter Courtney Friedman and hosted by the Collaborative Commission of Domestic Violence. The town hall will be streamed on KSAT Plus app. This week is your last chance to take part in our KSAT community food donations for any, at any, any participating Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union location. San Antonio Food Bank and RBFCU have partnered up to collect non-perishable food items for Hunger Action Month. So this is a map of all the participating locations. You can also find a list of, this, of these locations on KSAT.com. Donations are accepted today from 9 a.m to 5 p.m. You can also scan this QR code. It'll take you to our web article with a list of the 12 most wanted food items this month. And some of those are peanut butter, cereal, rice, and canned soup. Again, all this information online and the food drive ins today at 5 p.m. So do what you can. One other news this morning, two rock climbers, including a former Dallas Cowboys football player, were found dead near a Southern California peak on Thursday. 31 year old Gavin Escobar spent four seasons with the Cowboys and played for four other teams before retiring in 2019. He was working as a firefighter in Long Beach, California. Escobar and fellow climber Chelsea Walsh were found by rescue crews after a distress call in the San Bernardino National Forest. Well, UTSA is investigating one of their students after a camera was found inside a fake smoke detector in their apartment. UTSA police say the student was living at University Oaks. U UTSA officials sent out a letter to students living on campus Thursday saying police are investigating and staff members are testing smoke detectors on UTSA owned properties. If students have any concerns about a smoke detector, they're urged to contact UTSA police. That number on your screen right now, 210-458-4242. More and more people are going green, including their cleaning products. What does green even mean? According to Consumer Reports, not much. Same goes for words like natural, plant-based, non-toxic, and eco-friendly. They say these are just marketing terms to make products more appealing. Good news, you can still make eco-friendly choices. If you want plant-based products or biodegradable products, look for that specifically. Also check for a seal of approval from independent groups that check the claims. We have more things to look out for on KSAT.com. The Whitney Museum is opening a new National Geographic exhibition. It's called Monster Fish in Search of the Last River Giants, and it opens on October 8th. The interactive exhibit will include five life-size sculptures of monster fish showcasing species found right here in Texas and in the San Antonio River. There will also be hands-on experiences. You can read more about these stories on our website. Let's check it out right now. 638, 65 degrees. Still ahead, have you seen this TikTok trend about switching from traditional grass lawns to clover lawns? But will it work for San Antonio? Why a local ecologist sit saying not so fast. With the drought and intense heat we've experienced here in South Texas, this summer has taken a toll on our lawns, specifically our St. Augustine and Bermuda grasses. But have you seen the viral trend on TikTok that promotes getting rid of grass and switching over to clover? So I spoke with a native plant expert. If this trend works for San Antonio, and if not, what are our sustainable options? Yellow patchy grass to no grass at all. It's what a lot of San Antonio lawns look like right now after a brutal summer of drought and record breaking temperatures. And if your lawn is green, it might have taken a lot of watering. Local certified plant expert Crystal Orr with the Garden Center says most lawn grasses aren't native and was a tradition brought over from Europe many years ago where there is more rain and cloud coverage. I think it's like people wanted to you know, they brought that over with them because that's what they were used to seeing there. And then it just became this thing as a status. So are there more sustainable options? You may have seen this viral trend on TikTok that you can see playing on my phone, a call to switch from grass to clover. But native plant experts say not so fast. An important thing to do here with this trend is um, 
put a Texas twist on it. Use our local or Texas native species. Lee Marlowe is the sustainable landscape ecologist for the San Antonio River Authority. She says clover isn't native to South Texas and won't stay lush and green year round like these TikTok videos are showing. Instead, she says there are several native ground cover options. For example, frog fruit. It can grow in shade or full sun, requires little water, and pollinators love it. If you want something that looks like grass, Marlowe says you can use Weberville sedge that stays lush even through the winter months. Snake herb is another stunner that stays low to the ground and blooms beautiful purple flowers for pollinators. Another option, she says, that can be sustainable for ground cover is native to San Antonio. I actually found it in my yard. It is called straggler daisy. It is heat and drought tolerant, produces little yellow flowers, which pollinators love. And I haven't watered it much. And you can see it's doing way better than the Bermuda grass in my yard. Going native will also cut back on your time and spending. If you plant native in your yard, it will reduce your cost 20 to 50%. That includes water, pest spray, fertilizer, which all those things are really bad for the environment. Most importantly, Mar just yet. So that's good news, but uh, it doesn't look too good in some other areas. Let's take a drive over here to 16 or pardon me, 35 northbound at Broadway Street. We have a new crash that actually popped up while we're seeing one that seems to be resolving. Uh, other issues are just uh, again popping up right there on our map. Uh, it doesn't look good. We are seeing a little bit of a build up there along the northbound lanes of 35 northbound uh, at Broadway Street. But let's take you back over here here to 1604 southbound where we had another crash reported right there at Old Pearsall Road. But we'll give you a wide look at the map and you can see that we have uh, thankfully it, it doesn't look too bad elsewhere, but we do have obviously those slowdowns you can expect in the usual trouble spots. But let's get a different shot from that crash that's at 35 there at St. Mary's. Uh, just it's been a busy morning for a Friday. I was hoping for a better start to our weekend, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. All right, the skeletons are back. Are you okay? Do you need yeah, to drink? I've got a, no, I've got a tickle in my throat. I apologize about that. No, I was watching your story, Sarah, about um, all the, the green, and you like to take care of gardens and stuff. Yeah. Want to come to my house? Oh, no. The, the, <laughs> the video of the patchy or the complete dead grass was, was taken at was my life. house. Yeah, so I'm feeling it. I can it. Get that on my own. So. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the skeletons are back. They are planning session. It's complete crazy. Operation Crazy Bones is a go. And, you know, I looked at this picture and looked at it. And then finally I noticed, oh, there's the dog right there in the middle. Right. Aww. And kept looking at it. And then there's the kid on the shoulders oh. right there. So more to come. And they've set up a fan page on Facebook, Skeleton House of San Antonio to follow them as we go into October. Really? As the uh, Denote family uh, updates their skeleton display almost every single day. And keep sending pictures, because last year it was every single day. I think yeah. they had another. I don't know how they come up with all the I love that they moved it inside. Yeah. For now, for now. And thanks again to our buddy Oscar Carrero for sharing these pictures with us on KSAT Connect. And if you have some great pictures, Halloween decorations, pets, anything like that, scan that QR code and you can get in there and I love the skeleton still wearing a, a mask. All right, there's the glow of the sunrise. Spectacular once again. Boy, we've been spoiled with these sunrises the past couple of days. 65 in town, same thing at Lotus, 55 then. Bernie Stage and low 50s in the hill country. We'll still drop down uh, about three, four more degrees before it's all all done 61 in Castroville and uh, then big warm up throughout the day. Lots of sunshine out there and we'll make it up to 84 degrees today at noon. And again, we top off at 90. So slightly below normal for low temperatures, slightly above normal for the high temperature. And that'll be the case tomorrow as well. And then things will start to kind of get closer to their normals by next week. More on that in a second. Obviously nothing showing up on the uh, satellite and radar picture here in town and then go off to the east. And there you can see there is Hurricane Ian. Once again, it moved across the Florida Peninsula, and then it has regained strength being in the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean and 85 mile per hour winds. It is going to make landfall sometime later on early afternoon, Charleston, South uh, Carolina, and it's going to be at high tide. So about the worst time that it can make landfall, and then that's going to be a huge rain producer off there in the uh, Carolinas and going up into the Appalachians. As far as What's going on around here? Nothing today, nothing but sunshine. Pretty much the same thing tomorrow. Maybe an extra cloud or two. And then we'll have, this looks a lot more <laughs> ominous than it is, but these are a lot of high clouds that are going to be coming on in here. And that's going to be the case throughout a good chunk of next week. A lot of high level moisture is going to be coming in from the uh, Pacific Ocean. But unfortunately, 
it's not bringing any rain with it. 84 degrees today at noon, plenty of sunshine out there and high temperature makes it up to 90 today. Then tomorrow we'll start off once again right around 60. Get up into the upper 80s, a couple of extra clouds here and there. We get another shot of some drier air coming in, so that will allow temperatures to get cooler Sunday morning down to 57. And we'll still be, I mean, still very pleasant weather all next week, although a little bit more humidity comes back in here by midweek, so those low temperatures in the mid 60s. Thank you, Mike. 650, 64 degrees. You're watching GMSA. Tomorrow on GMSA, shopping for used cars seemed a lot easier in the past and less expensive. The challenges people are facing and why things aren't improving anytime soon. Let's make it five days in a row of a picture perfect sunrise. And here's the beginning of it. You're watching GMSA. A clerk at this north side store turns the tables on a robbery suspect. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say that the clerk shot and killed the suspect. That happened after 930 last night here in the 9600 block of San Pedro Avenue. That's near Isom Road. Police say that that suspect came into the Circle K store pretending to be a customer at first, but then pulled out a gun and pointed it at the clerk. The police say the clerk had a gun, pulled it out and shot the suspect. The police say that the suspect dropped his weapon and as he was trying to pick it up, that is when they say the clerk shot him again, killing him. Paramedics did try to work on that suspect but were not able to save his life. Police are still investigating this case and will decide what charges, if any, need to be filed. Reporting from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. Let's get a look here at 37 at 410. Uh, still that big mess out there, and uh, obviously now it's morning rush, so this is going to cause a lot of problems. But uh, you know, these first responders know that they know that they're going to be out there clearing the scene, so they're trying to make the road safer for them. So have some patience this morning uh, for everybody. So uh, you can see there that right now we do have some progress. So we're seeing a few first responders leave the scene, but right now traffic still being directed off of 37 northbound along to 410 to get into the Alamo City. We're getting a wide look now from our friends at Transguide, but. Let's Let's take you right to the map. Yeah, not looking good out there. Uh, 37 northbound at 410 is where the highway remains closed. Now entering hour three. Keep in mind, loop 410 westbound and eastbound trying to get on to 37 north will also have some trouble. But hopefully before uh, it gets busier out there, we'll see some progress. 35 northbound at Broadway Street. Be on the lookout for a crash also reported there. It's been a pretty busy morning, Mike, but at least we have a nice sunrise. Yes, indeed. And uh, case in point, beautiful glow as the sun is thinking about coming up. It'll be about another, oh, Gosh, say um, half an hour or so, half <laughs> 45 minutes before it comes up. Uh, 65 degrees here in town, 53 in comfort, and we're going to have another gorgeous day today. 90 for a high temperature. Sunday is going to be the coolest day, down to 60 tomorrow, but 57 on Sunday. Another reinforcing shot of dry air, and then nice temperatures next week. Styrofoam Cup, cheers to you, everybody. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. Good morning, America starts right now.